In the first book, Jamie tells Claire that he wants her honesty and that relationships have room for secrets but not lies. Too bad that didn't remain the mantra of the Fraser family. Jamie and Bree are discussing her pregnancy and he lies about his injured hand, an injury that occurred when he used Roger's face as a punching bag. She tells him she wishes she would have fought her rapist harder, and he fakes an altercation with her to prove that she could not have won against him. Jamie can be very wise. I think this is part of what really attracts women to him in the book, and on the show. And he's hot. Whatever. They settle into a routine on Fraser's Ridge, and Claire discusses Bree's options with her. Claire offers to help her have an abortion, or she tells her she could just go back to her own time while pregnant. After all, that's what Claire did with her. Bree isn't so sure what to do about the baby. After all, it could be Roger's. But one thing she is sure of is that she doesn't want to be with Ian, her own cousin. This seems to be kind of a normal idea to Jamie and Ian from their time, but obviously to Bree, this is a no-go. They do show us Roger and he does look terrible walking behind a Native American tribe with another guy. They both are in very bad condition, and not riding a horse, but trying to keep up with one. It's excruciating to watch, but it feels like Roger keeps hope alive. He's counting the days so he knows how far he has to backtrack to make it back to Bree, and he knows what direction he's going. Little does he know, he's going from North Carolina to upstate New York on foot. He doesn't even have on appropriate footwear. He does have a mostly dead friend along for part of the way, but he ends up all the way dead and Roger is completely alone with no one to talk to. Back at Fraser's Ridge, time is passing, but Bree is still having nightmares about Stephen Bonnet. And when Lizzie wakes her up in the middle of a nightmare, it all comes out that Lizzie thought Roger was her rapist. Then the Fraser family has a huge fight because obviously Jamie beat up the person that she loves without asking questions first. And Lizzie didn't tell her and Lizzie gave bad information and then it comes out that Claire didn't tell Jamie about Stephen Bonnet and it's all kinds of bad. And Ian has to admit his part in this horrible story and that's that he sold Roger into slavery to the Mohawks all in exchange for a necklace. In the end, Claire, Jamie, and Ian head off to upstate New York to find the Mohawk tribe and Roger, while Bree, Murta, and Lizzie head to River Run and the home of Aunt Jocasta. Thankfully, Aunt Jocasta remembers Murta, and they have a wonderful reunion, and she's fine to keep Bree at her house. She's family after all, even though Jamie did warn her that she was pregnant, and he knows that might cause her trouble. Ah, the good old days. What nobody knows though is that Roger has actually escaped the Mohawks. He literally fell off a cliff and was able to run to freedom. Unfortunately for everyone else, he's not going to be staying in America in the 1700s. No, he hears the buzzing of bees and he finds a stone that looks just like the one in Scotland. He has the jewels in his pocket from Bonnet and the last thing we see is him crying because he doesn't want to leave his heart home there in the States but he also wants to go back to his home time because why not? He has nothing left here, or at least that's what he thinks. After all, he's lost in the middle of the woods. What else is he gonna do? And the last thing we see is his hand clutching the jewels and his other hand touching the stone. That's it. What a surprise. Things are not looking good.